for my garden with my kids. I made it a station. Um, I thought this was cute little paint stirs. Um, and then this picture with the little wooden plank, I painted that um, in my garden in Arizona. And where I was before this. And then some cute little clothespin ideas. And for the equipment part, this is what you would need to have before you go out in the garden. And of course, like Charlene and Yadley have said, um, make sure you demonstrate how to use this and demonstrate your expectations for these tools um, before going out in the garden. And just a little list, just so you know what equipment to have before going out in the garden, um, depending on how you're watering, a hose, maybe a sprayer, watering can, or that efficiency by design with an individual cup or bowl for each student just to increase participation and make watering, which could be a one-person job, into a class-wide participation and ownership. Um, maybe you want to have hand shovels and hand rakes and uh, garden children garden gloves, uh, just enough for an average class size. And where to store all this? Um, it's important to consult your custodian facilities when you're working with the garden because they can be a really great ally. Maybe they already have a garden shed um, or have a spot where they store supplies. Um, maybe you have or want to get a garden supply shed or you have a central location that it could be someone's job to get these tools ahead of time before going out in the garden. And so that's if you already have a garden. And if you do not have a garden and you wish to start one, the next slide, we'll talk about a timeline and how to organize this. So here's my little timeline. So we have funding sources. Of course, this is really important for a garden. Um, and also to keep a wish list or a funding tracker, just so you know how much money you are or what supplies you're looking for. Um, some ideas for really good grants is Walmart, Home Depot, and Whole Foods has really good grants and they have timelines, or they have the timeline for the grant on their website. Um, a donation platform that I know Charlene and Yadley use is Donor Choose. It's kind of like a GoFundMe. Um, and it's a cool way to get supported by the community. Um, some organizations and partnerships that I've used with colleges is I've had UConn students help me with the garden and help me with projects that I want to do by reaching out to them. And I use the University of Rhode Island seed grant and I actually got, I think like 185 different packets of seeds for the garden. And this is all um, expired seeds that they give for free, which is really awesome. And of course, um, involving your local farms, churches, garden clubs, maybe you want to get your board of ed and ask them or food service. Um, and once you kind of understand funding sources, we got to decide a garden design. So some considerations for your garden is you'll have to know what soil, like consider the soil you're putting your beds on. Maybe you want beds or in-ground gardens. Um, sunlight, where will, your sun, where will your plants get the most direct sunlight? How do you want to water your plants? Do you want drip irrigation? Do you want a timer? Do you want a sprinkler? Do you want to cut that all together and just do um, hand watering? Um, do you want protection? Do you need a fence? Do you already have a fence? Um, and where are you going to store your tools? And if you're planning on um, planting that year, you'll have to decide on what plants you want to plant. And with that comes early plants to plant, late plants, when you have to do seed or seedlings. Um, and then because starting a garden is not a one person job and it shouldn't be a one person job and it's also a really good way to involve other people, um, you'll have to coordinate meetings, volunteers, maybe put an ad in the paper asking for volunteers um, and create task teams because there is build day you'll have to do. Maybe you need to prep your beds the day before. Um, so you'll have a build prep day or bed prep day, uh, school-wide planting day, um, and then midsummer projects like harvesting, weeding, garden maintenance. So just having task teams so that these are organized and you can do a group effort for the garden. Thank you guys.
<clears throat> thank you, Megan. Thank you, Shirlene, and thank you, Yadley, uh, for your presentations. Um, I'm going to try to move through this as quick as possible so we can get to some questions at the end. Um, don't worry, everything will be on the website. You can go and look at the slides if I didn't get to everything on the slide. Um, these are just some tips and some help um, getting your gardens prepared and planted um, for the year or whenever you're ready to go or when we're, whenever we're allowed to get back into the schools too. So, um, um, shoot. All right, sorry about that, technical difficulties. Um, so first things first, um, whether we're planting a garden or cover cropping for the summer, we're here to help. And I want to emphasize the cover cropping because I know that a lot of us won't be able to get into the gardens um, this year or maybe not until August. Um, we can still plant things in August. So um, anyways, cover cropping, we are offering um, clover seeds and we can help you get out there and cover crop your garden um, to uh, make everything easier for you when you are able to get back to work. Um, so um, just contact us for seeds and seedlings or cover crop materials to make your job easier for the next time. Um, of course, we're keeping safety first dur during COVID-19 restrictions. So um, please make sure that you pay close attention to the rules for your school and area and have access to masks, gloves, soap, water, and disinfectant when going into the gardens. Um, I would always bring extra and remind everybody that, that you have scheduled to help to uh, bring their own as well. Um, so um, <clears throat> we're also gonna want to uh, make sure we have people to help us in the garden this year. Um, ask people to sign up for garden duties. One of the things that I've found um, even though I'm not the biggest technology guru. Um, I have found a couple apps and things to, that help. So um, maybe consider Sign Up Genius or another Sign Up app to help you recruit um, and schedule volunteers. All right, so um, this is just an overview um, and I hope you decide to plant a garden or cover crop this summer. Um, Please contact me, lucas at gogvi.org, to request uh, free seedlings or if you have any questions. If I don't know how to help you, then I can get you in, the, in touch with the right person that will be able to help you. Um, check out our spring planting guide handout. I'll show you um, that example and it will be in with all of your resources. Um, and it just helps you know when to plant and about how long to expect to harvest and, and what you need to do in the meantime. Um, and then we're going to want to plant our garden and plant seedlings and seeds in the beds according to the instructions and maintain your garden by um, weeding and watering every week. Cover crops. I can't stress how amazing cover crops are. Um, we definitely use them and I, I think a lot of you already have used them to um, protect your gardens over the winter. It keeps um, the soil healthy and together with a little bit of plants they don't the soil and the nutrients don't wash away with the weather and things like that. So um, if you already have planted your cover crops last fall that's great. Um, you simply flip over the grass and let it feed the soil as it decomposes over a couple weeks and then you can get straight into planting. Reasons for cover, cover cropping, it helps stabilize the soil, adds organic matter, controls weeds, increases beneficial insects, adds nutrients, and makes it easier to flip. So um, if you won't be able to get into your garden this summer, hopefully um, we can help you get in there to um, cover crop over the summer that'll also that'll help control the weeds and all those things I just mentioned. Um, again, just contact me. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. All right, if you don't have a cover crop and you're gonna plant this summer, um, 
it's no big deal. We, uh, before, there was a time before cover cropping, and um, a lot of people haven't um, gotten hip to it yet. So um, it'll be just like normal. Um, have fun with this outdoor meditation. You're going to want to weed each bed, making sure to pull up everything you can from the base, getting as much root as possible. Um, you might want to amend the soil since you're removing a lot of weeds that pulled up a lot of those nutrients. Um, so it's a good time to add organic compost and fertilizers to the soil. And then you're going to want to work that fertilizer into the soil, into the top four inches at least with a rake or hoe. And then um, make sure you look back and enjoy your work. Um, weeding is really rewarding when you get to um, see what went from uh, five foot tall weeds to a nice um, um, clean garden. And then you're ready to plant. So um, I'm not gonna go through this whole slide, but organic matter, um, use whatever you can, compost, animal manure, pine needles, seaweed, hay. Um, I have a resource down at the bottom of this slide and um, organic matter basically it improves the texture of the compacted or heavy clay soils. It increases the water holding capacity. It supplies nutrients as it breaks down, buffers against pH problems, and buffers against uh, contaminants and toxins. Organic matter also won't um, burn your soil so, or um, over fertilize things. So um, organic matter, that's, that's where I'm at. <laughs> okay, spring uh, crop plans. Um, these again will be in your, your resources. We have everything from arugula to turnips and this, this first uh, spring uh, crop plan handout is going to be what most of you will want to plant. Um, these things take a little bit less uh, time and energy, and so we would like you to consider everything on, on this slide first. Um, herbs and flowers, you're always going to want to plant herbs and flowers as well, um, especially with the children in the gardens. I find um, herb, herb gardens are, are really popular, and um, you get the smell, the taste, and, and um, feel um, with, with different, um, you know, basils and mint and, and chives and cilantro and all those things. So um, herbs can be a lot of fun and, and um, also pollinator flowers. Um, I put some resources down at the bottom of this slide to help you um, uh, find out what you might want to plant in the garden um, to help draw in those pollinator butterflies and bees and all those healthy insects that we want in the garden. All right, and then these are the higher maintenance crops on the last uh, uh, planning slide, crop planner slide. Um, these, if you, I, I just want to stress, uh, make sure please that you have the time to, to do this and, and harvest and really take care of these plants. Um, because otherwise they can become uh, a little overwhelming and um, and it's no fun to uh, lose a lot of produce to, to uh, bugs and things. So um, anyways, these are very rewarding and, and fun plants, but uh, just make sure you have time if you're going to be planting cucumbers or peppers or tomatoes or squash um, because they can involve a little bit more energy than the other crops. <clears throat> All right, so you're gonna to wanna to use those, um, those, and then you're gonna also want to plan your crops and plant the crops you want to plant and where they will go. Um, these are just some questions to help you work through um, what you wanna do with your garden bed. And then also at the very bottom there is a uh, garden planning tool to help. There's all sorts of them online. This one I really like, it's called a kitchen garden planner. And um, I'll show it to you on the next couple slides. Um, if you go to that uh, web address, the Kitchen Garden Planner, um, this is just a picture of it. Um, so I can't do what it does, but um, you can see that you just put in your uh, width and length. It does square foot gardening. So all you do is drag um, from the list of, of plants down into your garden bed. And um, it tells you pretty much how much you can, you can plant in 
of each plant in each um, square foot area of your square foot garden. And um, it also, when you do that, it makes a list below all of those things so that you can, it, it helps you learn how to plant each one of those. So um, the one that's up here right now is the um, Asian eggplant, it starts seeds a quarter inch deep indoors eight weeks before. So it, it gives you all of the instructions for each one of the, the plants that you want to plant, um, plan for and plant this year. And um, don't copy what I have here. <laughs> this is uh, just to kind of show you what what you can plant in each each spot, um, but you're not going to want to plant one garden bed this varied. So, um, all right. Um, next, you will plant your seedlings and seeds in the bed according to the instructions. Um, that's the fun part. <laughs> you've got your bed already made. You've got all of the, the the hard work done, and your your seedlings there. And so now we get to play in the dirt. And um, that's the biggest thing. This is uh, we get to play in the dirt. So don't get overwhelmed. Just visit your gardens regularly and schedule others willing to help. The more you visit and have others help you visit, um, the less time and energy you'll have to put into the maintenance. Weeding can be a daunting task or a friendly meditation with nature. You get to describe your experience. Okay, so um, this is a list of the, the support um, that we offer. Um, this is at a minimum. I, we have a sheet. You may have already seen me at the schools dropping off the school garden support that we offer. Um, and it's also looking for um, school garden champions. I hope each of you are school garden champions this year and help um, get um, students and, and um, families out into the garden this year. Um, so we offer lesson plans. Those are online on our website. We have one-on-one uh, -on -one technical assistance. Um, get a hold of me and um, I'll help you and anybody else at uh, GBI2. I will um, at least be able to steer you in the right direction if, if you get a hold of me. So, um, soil, seedlings, tools, and equipment, we can help with all of these things, but you have to ask us. Um, unfortunately, we don't have enough time to do everything for everybody, but um, we do want to help as much as possible. So, just get a hold of us and um, we will um, see what we'll do, what we can do. And um, we also have several professional development days each year. This is our first webinar, so I hope this is enjoyable. Um, volunteers for cleanups and rebuilds as needed. We can, we can help um, organize people to do a bigger project. Um, those are limited, so um, please keep in contact with us once again. We can't just go out and check out who, uh, who needs what. We, we need you to help us help you. So, um, and then field trips to the reservoir community farm. Um, I can't wait to see you, see people up there next year. <laughs> and um, we're looking forward to it. So um, these are some of the resources that we'll have online for you. We have school garden lesson plans and resources. We have um, suggested plans that, that we wrote out for, for this particular season. Um, tips for managing kids in the garden, sample station rotation schedule, attention getters, um, school garden spring crop plan, spring planting resources, and um, even funding help. So um, please check out our website and the resources that we're offering through this webinar. Um, and then tell GVI you're interested in free seedlings this year and arrange a delivery date with me. Um, we secure and offer seedlings to the schools and community gardens um, grown and donated from GVI and local nurseries. Um, just get a hold of me to reserve your donations and um, hopefully we can help you get, get started planning. Um, and then this is a contact list. Um, And I think this is the slide we're gonna stop on. I think the next one is, um, oh no. Okay, so I'll, I'll come back to this screen so you can write down any <laughs> any contacts that you might need. 
um, please fill out this, our survey that's it's in the link. Um, I saw a bunch of, uh, I haven't been able to get to the chat section recently. Um, I see there's 11 questions though. So, um, um, so without further ado, on to the questions and I will leave up the, um, where am I here? Okay. I'll leave up the contacts for you. So if, if you have a question, just unmute or I guess I can uh, look in the um, chat questions here and call in. Yeah. Um, we can also do, yeah, uh, let's see. We can't see folks kind of raise their hands. So why don't we... If you if folks need a little assistance unmuting, put something in the chat box, and then we can help you unmute. Oh, the the raised hands is in the participants. That's where the raised hand is. Okay. Can I ask you something? Hi, this is Karina. Hi, Karina. Hi. So, um, uh, I'm very upset about all this COVID closure, and I'm sure you all are, and we're try all trying to do the best we can with what we have, but um, <clears throat> Charlene and I were supposed to start taking out the beds from the garden at MCM because some of them are falling mm -hmm. apart and some of them are not safe for the students anymore to be there. And um, so right when that weekend, when we were supposed to, with your help, to go get everything out and get ready for the rebuild because we already have the redesign the you know s word hit the ceiling and uh <laughs> yep and now we're all in quarantine and we could not do that anymore and um it's very frustrating and i'm upset and i'm not sure um I guess we're going to have to figure out when this is all yeah. over, when we can go back and we're going to start from there. Right? Yeah. That, so you're, the, yeah, the question is, I guess, when we'll get, when we'll be able to get back to it. So, right. um, so the governor's stay home, stay safe order um, kind of communicates what activities um, are kind of essential. And so if you're doing essential activities, you can, you know, keep your job, you can, um, leave your home and go do those essential activities. So things like food access and agriculture are essential. So if you are working at an organization like GVI to grow food, um, you can continue to do that. If you're an individual that is going somewhere to pick up food or to a community garden to grow food for your home, you can do that too. Um, so if you, if you can d let us know that you have... Um, families or if you're yourself or other families are interested in using that site to grow food to put food on their tables right now um, I will help get an approval from like the principal if we need to go to the superintendent we can do that but um, but we need to kind of demonstrate that that it's because people want to use the site to to grow food for their tables we've basically stripped away all of our educational well we've moved our educational work to this online format and right. so we are out and about when we are growing food or helping others grow food does that make sense so oh no yeah well i i want to, well um i don't want to def you know ask anybody or put anybody in jeopardy so i know what my, my principal is gonna say that he's not gonna you know like he's probably not gonna want anybody to um go there and not be safe right so that is still school property even though it's outside mm -hmm. and if anybody goes there without me or another teacher and something happens god forbid and they get sick then they could you know we could open another yeah. big can of worms so it's better to just not you know sadly as sad as it is it's better not to open that it's just um, I'm wondering, you know, if we can still redesign and rebuild our garden when we come back. But I guess this answer cannot be answered. Sure. Only. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Once once school grounds open, yeah, we're we're committed to doing that with you. All right. Yeah. That's what I was. That's yeah, what I was. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Good. 
that's what I was, you know, wondering. I was like, oh, dang it. Was this my, was this my window? No, and no, no, I no, missed no, no, it, no. and now this is not going to happen? It's going to happen. Don't, Don't worry. worry. Okay. okay. All right. All right. All right. Great. Yay. All right. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> But just as, as I've been thinking about this is this is Amy Vasquez from Bataya. As I've been thinking about this and hearing things, we still at this juncture are um it's it's May twentieth. We'll be back in school. Can we plan towards that that eventuality and then if we have yeah. to abandon ship then um you know then, then we do. But mm -hmm. I, I in my mind, I'm planning towards the 20th and seeing what we can do to salvage the end of this, this season. Yeah. I think um, that's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know, I know the, the, my, my students, I've been, I've been dropping off pots of, of seeds or seedlings to them and they're growing them at home and some of them are planting them in their, in their gardens at home. But, um, and and then we we have like a, a club that we we meet after that I'm doing things on team with them, trying to get them engaged with doing um, like planting celery and planting um, planting onions and things like that, and just doing different activities. I I was I just came in agreement with what, what Karina was saying. It's really about keeping them engaged at this point, but. Um, I would love to see some kind of distant learning um, for uh, view of gardening. I mean, when you garden in a in a raised bed, you don't have to be on top of one another. If we had some kind of a protocol that made sense that kept kids at a distance and still small groups working on different boxes at different times. I mean, I think it's, it's, it's something worth considering because our, our kids are, are losing so much of their, their, their education. So that's, that was just a thought. I, was, I wanted to fly that by you guys. Um, yeah, I, I agree. I think um, our food core members have been in touch, you know, Charlene and Yadley yeah, have been in touch with um, their contacts at the schools that they're serving in to see if uh, any kind, you know, if if it makes okay. sense to start up some distance learnings. And I think the feedback that they're getting right now is that teachers are feeling swamped. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe what we'll do is we'll follow up kind of offline and and follow up with you, Amy. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's good. Uh, I'd be more than willing to help with that. Oh, cool. Thanks, Debbie. Debbie DeChico. Can I can I say something? Yeah, of course. Um, I was just talking with Charlene today, actually, and we were going back and forth emails before. Um, so I created a, a team on Teams. I created a team with my garden club students. Yeah. Um, and they're from all grades. They're from third grade to uh, fifth grade, a few, and then six. Mostly are in sixth grade and seventh grade. Um, and I teach sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. But um, the idea is that I. Um, invited uh, Charlene to be um, in, on Teams to be a guest. And I told Charlene that she should, I don't know, she should contact the IT department to be able to, so I can make her an owner of the um, Garden Club class. Right. So this wow. way, you know, through Teams, she can add, you know, she can upload little activities. And yes, we're all swamped and kids are also sw also very like, overwhelmed with all the work that they have to do and assignments that are due and different people are, you know it's just and I you know we we're talking with Charlene that if we do some like cute little you know brainless activities like I don't know share a recipe of your favorite smoothie or yeah you know some something that is still food slash garden related yeah they would we, enjoy to do it yeah you know they could do that but and if if you know if the um uh, food core uh, service members can have access to the classroom, to the team classroom, right. and they would be able to upload these activities. Then that that um, yeah. it would you know eat, make the the um, teachers' job much easier too. Yeah. But if not, we, yeah, go yeah, ahead. That, no, 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 I'm sorry. We 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 explored that. Like we've looked into that in the past, and there's a pretty hard like no. 
but I wonder oh, if they'd cool. be <laughs> to give access to um to give like uh outside to, access yeah it's bridgeportedu.net right so to br give bridgeportedu.net uh web addresses to our food core members or to give outside oh, access to the like internet to our food core members and we we didn't get anywhere i remember we explored that a little bit when chris was here and i think we brought it up recently okay. with um with uh the folks in the administration this year too but okay. maybe i wonder if they'd be a little bit more flexible just considering our realities now so that's also something that we can follow up on well so and maybe me... if you were using it's a platform that the garden that the garden teams that that are already established at schools yeah I, and so just, you know it would be a matter of, of like i'm i'm doing videos of of how to do things and, and dropping them in the in that couldn't couldn't we share like what like you're talking about charlene's activities some of the videos just to yeah. just to kind of like keep the keep the interest peaking and just mm -hmm. provide a little variety for kids right oh no yeah we i mean definitely we and charlene and i talked and we said you know worst case scenario she could send me the assignment or whatever right. it's not an assignment i know that's but that's how the name is on teams assignment mm -hmm. it's not necessarily an assignment it's an activity uh, right so you could you know maybe share with me the assignment the activity the video the whatever and i can post it on the page for the kids to see but yeah. you know, the idea was that you know maybe the te the i have six different classes that i have to post assignments for science Per week so i usually post three assignments for each class so that's three times six it's a lot and you know giving feedback and so the idea was maybe if the uh food core uh service members have access then i would you know like the teachers the class and teachers would not have to um you know be as yeah. involved but you know yeah. what if, if it's not possible then we're gonna find a different way to for students to get the information because I think it's it's you know it's great and kids love it and you know mm -hmm. parents love it too yeah it might yeah. be we yeah. might have to go the route of doing like the pre-recorded videos and right yeah, yeah. yeah. that would be awesome yeah because okay. yeah, I, I don't I don't great. know if we'll be able to go the other way of getting access into like the okay. internet, right but. but I think All just right. just having a a, a <laughs> store of of um of pre-recorded, maybe your 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 um your staff can do different different takes on things that people can do at the kids can do at home. Yeah, specifically, cool. or having them okay. grow avocado trees or so you know you know, just different that little things amazing. to keep it to keep it <laughs> yeah. something that's manageable for for kids and and having them even develop their own gardens in, in their own backyards, in urban gardening at its at its finest, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, this is great. Mm -hmm. Charlene and Yabby and I were talking about these kinds of tutorials and videos earlier, so we'll follow yeah, up on that. Yeah, that'd be great. We, Charlene and I actually have one so far. Oh, really? <laughs> one. But um, we wanted to know, well, this was a long time ago before we knew about Bridgeport and Microsoft Teams, so we wanted to kind of get a head start on it. So we do have one that is complete but we didn't really know where we could share it to considering we didn't know what was going on in bridgeport in terms of distance learning like at the time we heard that everyone had packets um and that <laughs> teams wasn't a thing yet right. so um yeah once we found out teams was a thing um i think we were just trying to figure out how does teams work because the main one that we've been hearing is google classroom so we had already had like food core yeah, google sure. classroom um yeah like a google classroom yeah. like food core but then we heard about teams and we were like okay so now it's completely yeah, different you heard <laughs> from um bridgeport opted out of using google so because of that with google slides yeah. has become like something we can't we can't directly access but yeah Right. All right. Right. But well, we have, there is a video. There is one. <laughs> just one. Yeah. Well, so what I was, I will say to just about all this, like now that we, we are figuring out how we can support teachers or get that content out, um, Yadley and I will work together to figure out what we can start sending out. Um, and there's a lot of content that's been generated already um, through, uh, food core across the nation 
So there are resources we can share. We'll, we'll, we'll figure out a way. Maybe it's sharing it on, on GBI's website or, um, right. yeah, so we'll figure it out. <laughs> okay. That, you know, even, even more academically, um, geared, um, things too, so that, that kids are, yeah, they're planting stuff, but, but maybe they have to do some research to find out about this, about the eggplant they're planting. You know, it, uh, there's all kinds of directions you can take that in. Uh, that sounds awesome. That would be really, that would be helpful at this juncture. <laughs> Are there any other questions before we wrap up? No, I just wanted to uh, thank you all for this PD. It's been amazing to see you all. And um, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll uh, keep you posted with uh, my uh, garden at, here at home that I'm going to do in the backyard and with the uh, worms, with the wigglers. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll keep you posted. Wonderful. Thank you, everybody. Awesome. Thank you, everybody. I just want to say thank you. Don't forget Good job, you guys. Yeah. Very helpful. Thank you, everybody. Thank Please you so don't much. forget Thank to you. fill out the survey. Yes. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye. Thank Stay you. safe, everybody. Be safe. Thank you. <laughs>